a goal tonight is to hopefully, if it's completely foreign to you, um, to help uh, you uh, get acquainted with a catalog approach. A lot of what we do in our industry is catalog engineering. Uh, selecting things from one supplier and combining it with stuff from another supplier. So one, uh, one uh, industry that or one of your uh, customer bases that's very big is the retail sector. So the retailers uh, typically have catalog items that each of you select as a contractor and then do your uh, costing based on that. So. That's really the goal of tonight to help you with, uh, with that lot. So what are we going to cover? Okay, so the basics of a direct expansion system, I think that's always handy. If I ask questions, then um, I sometimes I get bizarre answers. So let's cover that first. Um, and then um, we'll look at evaporator selections first. Now, some people call it blower coils. Huh? I think in the invite we called it blower coils. So... Uh, Sometimes if you talk about evaporators, folks don't know what you're talking about because um, they've been working in an in, in industry for a long time and they know that thing up there as a blower coil. Condensers. And uh, yeah. And then um, direct expansion systems is hopefully, you know, an introduction to newcomers. Um, the condenser selections, that's also something I believe most of you can get uh, well under the belt quite easily. And then to end off, we'll just touch on gas coolers, which is a special variation of a condenser. Okay, so firstly, let's look at your, um, at your uh, fin and tube heat exchangers. That's, the, that's what you work with most of the time. Eh? Get lots of questions regarding microchannel units, but those are for a specific application. They're very good in specific applications but we're going to look at fin and tube designs tonight so your basic refrigeration system you have your compressor you have your um, that's a driver of your system you have your evaporator that's obviously absorbing the heat in your cabinet and uh, you have your condenser rejecting the heat this might be you know as basic as you can get and you have some ancillaries you have an expansion device and, uh, but I think the basic thing to understand is you're absorbing heat, your compressor is helping you move that heat energy around and you're rejecting that outside with ambient air. Okay, so of course your evaporator is on the low pressure side huh? and your condenser is on the high pressure side of your system. And um, I think this is also a very good illustration. Always try and get students to memorize this. Start with a vertical line. Your compressor is on the vertical line. One half on the low pressure side, one half on the high pressure side. Similarly, at the bottom, your direct expansion, ach, your um, expansion valve is also being fed from the high pressure side and feeding into the low pressure side. Okay? Condenser is on your high pressure side. So if you take a reading, at the condenser, your reading is the high pressure reading. If you take a reading at the evaporator, it is your low pressure reading. Huh? When your system is in operation. And for the greater part, you have fans circulating the air, of course. Huh? Your evaporator will be in an, inside an enclosure, an insulated enclosure, most of the time, obviously. And your condenser fans will, of course, draw ambient air in use that ambient air to provide a cooling effect and that's why you're rejecting heat there you're absorbing heat here your compressor takes it to the condenser and you reject the heat now the purpose of your condenser is to reject heat energy okay scary picture sorry i should have prepared you for that huh it's like i'm showing a naked woman to you huh so pH chart is uh, something that lots of folks avoid, but it's not necessary. So pH chart is a, really a helpful tool to understand uh, many issues, to understand how a system is functioning. So this uh, curve that you see there is your saturation line. On that, uh, in that top uh, left-hand corner, you'll have your liquid range. Sorry, let me backtrack. Um, 
on the vertical axis there, you have your pressure scale. Horizontal axis here, you have enthalpy. Enthalpy is, of course, heat energy. Um, and uh, I think Kevin Schlemmer did it in one presentation, so I'll, uh, I'll pinch that idea from him. But you've got to see the zone underneath the saturation line, most as that, as this, uh, when you go to the beach. Huh? If you go on this end, you have, on this, this is your saturation line, and that's your saturated liquid line. So, when you go to the sea, you reach a point where you're in the water all the time, high tide or low tide. Huh? You move this way, then you reach a point where the water never gets to. So, you start off as a saturated liquid on that side. Let's look at these lines here. They are constant temperature lines. So they run vertically in that zone. They hit that saturation line. Then they run horizontally, and yet they drop down. So that's called an isotherm. It's a constant temperature line. Okay. So you're combining pressure, enthalpy, temperature, and, of course, the state of your refrigerant. So in the top there, like I said, you've got liquid. The bottom of the saturation line, you've got liquid and vapor. And as you make your way this way, your liquid state boils off until you end up with saturated vapor. In this region of your pH chart, you have superheated vapor. That point at the top there, you'll see it on any pH chart. And sorry, the pH chart is unique to the refrigerant that you're working with, of course. Top of the pH chart is something called the critical point. And you'll see it on any pH chart. And we will we'll get to exactly why that's important a bit later. Okay. So, let's simplify that diagram. This is your basic refrigeration cycle. You start off with, you start off with superheated vapor. We're not going to go into why it must be superheated tonight. You compress that from, let me just forward a bit. So, I think you've got to see this this uh, pH chart and your system diagram, lay them out next to one another. There's your high pressure side, there's your condenser. Huh? Turn, the, turn the diagram sideways. Okay, there's your condenser, your condenser is on the high pressure side. If at the bottom, your evaporator is on the low pressure side. And of course, nah, your compressor compresses from point, let me, okay, so, your, com your heat is absorbed from point number four to point number one. So, why do I say use that uh, terminology? So, on your, on your enthalpy axis here at the bottom, you're starting from a lower value to a higher value. You're absorbing heat. No? So, hopefully you understand that the figure grows this way horizontally. Okay, <clears throat> so... You are ejecting heat when you move from a higher value to a lower value. If you do a calculation and the value drops, you're ejecting heat. Huh? Okay, so compression takes place from point number one to point number two. So the subject matter we're going to cover tonight is, of course, what takes place when you absorb heat and when you reject heat. Your evaporator and your condenser. Compression... From point number one to point number two. Superheated vapor. So that no, everyone knows you shouldn't have liquid drawn into a compressor. So we're not going to go into why that's necessary. Your heat rejection takes place from point number two to point number three. You need a bit of liquid subcooling for your, fun your system to function optimally. Your expansion device is a sudden drop from high pressure from point number three to point number four. And that is... Again, crossing over from high pressure to low pressure. Okay, so, sorry, there's the, there's the points. Sorry, any, any questions? Did I lose you? Huh? But I think it's important to see the system diagram and a pH chart together. That will help you to understand things better, troubleshoot a bit better, you know, understand problems better okay all right let's move on <laughs>